Welcome to the newest episode of Totem Tuesday, and I am so excited to introduce to you one of my own personal totems, which is the first one I think I've done so far. It's one of my own personal totems. This is a creature that is very misunderstood and very harshly judged for obvious reasons, but I think that this animal has a lot more to offer than it has to take away. So let me introduce to you the, 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 the wasp. Also, this is one of my own pieces that I did. I drew this with color pencil. If you would like a copy of it, just go ahead and check out my art section and my website, and there's that. Okay, so let's get started then. A lot of people hate wasps, and there's this misconception that wasps do nothing to help our planet, which is a complete lie. If you ever hear anybody say that about any animal, it's not true. Even the mosquito. I might do the mosquito one day just to prove that there is a purpose for everything on this planet. The wasp is one of the strongest totems that you can possibly get if you are a business owner or you are an entrepreneur. The queen bee does not play around. She does not play around. She will teach you how to go for your goals, accomplish them, fiercely attack whatever it is that you need to do and to continue moving forward and to continue to build the empire to which you are queen of. So I'm so excited to go over all of the wasp with you and yeah. All right, so first I'm gonna go over just the general wasp description, but there are two different kinds of wasps that you could be working with. So you're either gonna be working with the solitary wasp or the colony wasp. Um, a lot of them are, a lot of their traits are very similar, but there is a difference in how they behave and how they interact and how they grow their hive and their ultimate like, life goal. Because if the wasp is coming to you, the wasp is coming to you because you are meant to create something that is for the world, that goes out into the world and leaves you and kind of has its own life. Um, so anything that the wasp is working with, it's gonna be for the betterment of the planet and your overall goals. So first thing I wanna say is they are creatures of air, which means they are of the mental realms. Any kind of creatures that fly are going to be more involved with the mental than they are the emotional. Whereas like water animals are gonna be more of the emotional than they are mental. Wasps are very mental goal oriented. They are about planning, about having a list of things that you need to do and executing on those things. Wasps do not play around with the heart. They are not emotional creatures and they don't care how you feel. So if you have wasps coming to you, it is asking you to get down in the dirt, do what you have to do, don't complain, get it done. Get it done. <laughs> it's actually funny because um, the other day I was wondering, I'm like, what animal should be the next one? And lo and behold, as I'm thinking this, a wasp comes up to me and does the whole like, you know, like in your face kind of thing. And I need wasp medicine right now <laughs> to complete so many projects that I have been procrastinating on because I haven't felt like doing it. And that is not the wasp style. The wasp, the wasp style. It's not easy to say. There is also a huge difference between the female wasp and the male wasp. And I'm sorry guys, but this is a very female dominated species. Only the females carry the stingers. The females take care of the food. They take care of the building. They do pretty much everything. The male's only job is to basically pollinate and to make babies. That's it. Um, but they're obviously very crucial because without them, we would not have any other wasps. So. But you know, that is what it is. But the female wasp, she is very masculine because she, if you think about it, she builds things, she defends the hive, and her stinger is actually a sex organ that she uses to inject um, her eggs into other living creatures sometimes. That's more of the solitary wasp than it is the colonial wasp. Wasp in general, when you have this medicine, you are gonna have a stinger. You are gonna have a way to defend yourself, uh, to protect what it is that you're building. 
you have to make sure to be able to use this to your advantage and not to destroy things that you don't want to destroy. Uh, with working with wasp medicine, you might snap on people and you might kind of make rash stinging decisions without really thinking about it. It's not really your fault though because wasps get agitated very easily. I mean, just one little swat and they're ready to you. Um, but that's in their nature because they have one goal in mind, which is to build and anything that comes in the way of that is needs to be taken care of. So just keep that in mind when you're working with this medicine. Try to be kind to your friends and family and people that don't really, you shouldn't be singing. Um, so just yeah, love on them. <laughs> Not, don't sing them, love them. Home is everything. It's everything. If you are taking on this medicine, making sure that your home is nice, making sure the hive is good, that's, that's going to be your biggest goal, just like the wasp. They need to feel secure. They need to feel stable. A wasp will up and leave a nest that it started if it does not feel that it is safe. Um, this is going to be mainly the solitary wasp because uh, the colonial wasp, they're, they're more like picky about where they originally build because they are going to build an entire colony. Um, but the, the single solo wasp will just up and leave if it doesn't feel like it's coming out the way it wanted it to, or I guess you'd say, you know, it, it gives up on the project, which is something that you should be able to do with wasp medicine. So at any moment, if you're not liking where you're at, move yourself. You are not stuck. You are a creature of the air and you can move around. One of the things I want to talk about with the solo wasp and how they differ so much from the colonial wasp is the solo wasp is doing it on its own. And this is, I think, very important because a lot of people with wasp medicine and a lot of entrepreneurs, they originally start off as the solo wasp. You know, they have to do everything themselves. They build their house, they take care of their young, they hunt for them, they feed them, they do all the work. And, you know, once the babies are old enough, they just kind of, oh, they're gone. You know, unlike a, a colony, which will stay and add to the colony. So these wasps, they're free, but they're also kind of, you know, they're kind of limited in what they can accomplish and do. So when you're working with wasp medicine, just keep that in mind that if you are trying to build an empire, that the solo route is not always the best way to do it. I just want everyone to know this with wasps is that solo wasps very rarely sting. They are not as aggressive as your colonial wasps like yellow jackets and hornets. Um, so these are the wasps that you're mainly going to find near residential areas. The tiny nests that only have maybe like six or seven wasps and they are all actually independent wasps. They are only like sharing like an apartment building kind of thing. They're not actually helping each other. It's not a hive. Um, they're not very likely to sting at all and you should not kill them because that's really rude and they actually aren't gonna hurt you and they are very, very good for our crops and um, our whole ecosystem relies on them. So please don't kill them just because they're in your personal space. The ones that you are scared of and the ones that could attack you, those wasps are not going to be the ones that you're gonna find near a home. It's very rare that you would find them near a home. And those ones you definitely wanna call someone to have them move instead of killing them because a colony, colony wasps, they take out so many pests, insects, that they are so vital for our well-being. Enough of my rant on why you should protect the wasp. I love them, I don't wanna see them die. The biggest thing about wasps is now coming up. It's the part that I really wanted to make this whole video for because I find it to be so inspiring and makes this animal just such an amazing animal to learn from. And this is going to be on the colony queen bee wasp, which wasp and bees are not technically the same thing even though they're classified kind of, you know. Anyway, so the queen, winter has come and gone and the queen wakes up from hibernation, she's pregnant, and she has nobody, nothing. Every bee from her colony, which could have been up to 25,000, are now all dead. Besides the other queen bees who are long gone and they're in the same boat she is. So this is talking about a person who is pregnant with ideas, they have dreams, they have goals, and they are on their own. 
they are on their own. That's all they have is their dreams and their goals. Because she has to single-handedly raise an entire colony, which could be 25,000 of them, and see it through all the way to completion, which is the end of the season, the end of the cycle, and new queen bees emerge. And this is just up to her to do everything. So I really feel like people working with wasp totem can really appreciate that because they become so a part of what it is that they're they're doing their goals. They become so focused and driven that nothing can stop them on completing this. You know, and the queen wasp, you know, she is very aggressive. She is not the wasp that you want to mess with, especially in the early stages too. You know, when she first has like these eggs inside of her, she has to find a secure location. She has to raise the first little bits of larva. She has to get them their um, food and like hunt for them and build the new cells until they eventually finally like, you know, hatch. That's probably not the right term for bees. I don't know what the term is. So these wasps have to now become worker wasps. So she transitions from doing everything herself to now she's training others to do the job that she once had. And this is so crucial if you're building your own company. Like at some point, you're gonna have to teach people to do the things that you've already done so that now you can do things that only you can do. So she goes on to teach them and they start doing all the hunting and the foraging for her. And she can now focus on defending the colony and building a bigger Now that the queen has started having other people do everything for her, she can now focus on the next task in her empire, which is going to be hatching the males. You know, the male wasps do not have stingers. They are called drones and they are mainly for mating, but they are so crucial to, you know, wasp continuing on and pretty much the future of her own personal DNA. So having the males hatch is a huge accomplishment for her and the males leave the nest, they go off, and wait for the neighboring queens to emerge and then they impregnate the neighbors, um, which continues on keeping the gene pool, you know, spontaneous and all the evolution things. So another thing I wanna say before actually that would be that the workers, they do all the hunting for the larva. So they will kill a lot of insects and a lot of these insects are the things that um, take out our crops, pest insects. But they don't take out the insects so that, you know, they can personally eat. They actually cannot eat them. They give them to the larva who then eat them and then create this sugar spit, which is all the wasp actually needs to survive is just sugar. So the wasp will then eat the sugar spit and they feed themselves on the work that they're doing. And this is huge for business. It's really saying you reap what you sow. So the energy you put into your goals and your projects are going to be the same things that you get out. And this is from wasp. Like wasp will teach you that if you want something that you can have it, but you have to be willing to put in the work and then get the benefits from it. So then, yeah, as these male species, <laughs> male species, as these male wasps leave the nest, this is huge for the queen because that means she's completed the first goal, which is seeing the males to fruition. This ensures that her DNA will go out into the world and you know, she's happy about that. But then the next goal, her next biggest, the biggest goal that she did this, like kind of this whole thing for, it's really the process, but was to see the baby queens be born. She has kept them safe. They are the last ones to emerge and it's towards the end of the whole cycle. The baby queens will come out, they will leave the nest, they'll get pregnant and then they will go and they will hide and eventually create their own empires. So. This is someone who not only created an empire for herself, but then she produced a lot of others that can do the same thing she did. This is an energy that you can change the world with. I mean, if you really want to work with wasp, wasp is not an easy totem to work with at all because it is very harsh. It is very cold. It will expect you to, it's basically like boot camp. Like, you know, it's like, you're not going to start crying in front of your drill instructor who's like, get down, you know, and be like, I don't want to. You know, the wasp is the same thing. Like, she does not care how you feel. You know, is it going to add to the hive? Is it going to get the job done? But 
if you work with this energy, the things you can do are absolutely amazing. Um, so this brings me to the cards that the queen gets. She gets da -da -da -da. the queen of swords. How could I not? This is the wasp right here. She's got her stinger. She's ready. She's she is ready to cut through any bull that is in her way. And that is what the Queen of Swords is all about. She is not playing around. She is like, we're doing this. You're in or you're going to get cut. Like, this is it. I'm the queen and this is what I've decided. The other one is going to be the Hierophant because he is all about structure. This is about doing things the way they've always been done, sticking to it because it's successful. You know, and this is kind of... When you take on the wasp totem, it's asking you to kind of look at how other successful people have done it and how can you repeat that structure to get the same outcome. So this is like the baby queens that are all going around like their mothers did this, the cycle before them. So now it's their turn to raise an empire and to make sure everybody's staying on track. So this would definitely represent this kind of structural base. Um, yeah, wasp offers such amazing, amazing lessons, and I think that this animal, though, they do, you know, they're scary. They're like really tiny little creatures that pack a huge punch. I mean, people are terrified of them, and this is saying something, I think, when you work with that energy, is that you, first off, you might not always be liked, but you are respected, and that's something that can be a little hard to swallow sometimes. If you're a people pleaser or if you're used to getting approval because the queen remember when she comes out of that winter everybody else is dead it's just her like she doesn't care what anybody thinks you think that she makes these worker bees and they're all like oh the queen's in a bad mood today she's like yeah keep going because we don't have time like winter's coming winter is coming and we're all gonna die so <laughs> make sure like you have to stick to the plan or like we're not gonna go on like we're not gonna continue on if she fails at any point, her lineage is done. It's done. If she does not get to at least the males. So it's extremely vital for her to be able to do that. And um, another thing, though, about working with this is the little acts that you do can have far-reaching consequences in both good and bad ways. So just like her sting is so tiny, but yet so fearsome and so vicious, you know, whatever you do is the same thing. The tiny acts that you do could have far reaching effects. So putting out an ad for something, you might end up making like, you know, thousands of dollars off of it. Or, you know, the small, simple act of snapping at someone that you care about can lead to an unraveling of your relationship with them. So working with wasp medicine, you really need to be aware of every action that you have and really try and tame those aggravated you know, stings that you can sometimes give <laughs> with her, but, but she will take you places that you didn't know that you could go. So for that, we absolutely love the wasp and I'm so happy that I got to do her justice. Um, I wanted to let you guys know for spirit of the earth that bees, um, have been widely believed to be endangered from the research I've been doing, it seems that there are eight species on the endangered list, but uh, they are not the bees that we think that they are. They're not like the honeybees. Um, the, actually, those, we were just having issues with honeybees in captivity. But the wild honeybees are doing absolutely just fine, and wasps are doing just fine. So there is nothing to report right now on any widespread bee disappearances or dying out or extinction. So for that, I am very happy to say. There are, however, like I said, eight different species of bees on the endangered list. Most of them come from Africa. So if you have any feelings towards that and you want to go do research, please feel free. Always help wherever you can. So, all right, you guys. Well, that's all I have for you for this Totem Tuesday. And I'm so excited to see you guys next week for another wonderful animal. All right, ta-ta.